You know, it's hard to imagine what online gaming was like back in the 90s if you weren't there. People talk about logging onto the World Wide Web with their dial-up connection and waiting hours to install games through multiple discs. Or God forbid, you had to download it. It was a completely archaic world back then, but believe it or not, yeah, there was MMORPGs that existed in the 90s. Not a ton of them, but they did exist. Ultima Online and EverQuest are probably the shining examples of early MMORPGs, games where people could log in and play with people across the world. But there was other smaller titles like the one we are talking about today. The Realm Online, or simply referred to as The Realm, is an MMORPG that released all the way back in 1996, published by Sierra Online, aka the massively beloved Sierra Entertainment, most commonly known for their incredibly memorable point-and-click adventure titles like King's Quest and Leisure Suit Larry, and the main guy from Metal Jesus Rocks. I'm Ken, and this is Roberta Williams, and we founded a company called Sierra Online. Ah! Our old bosses! Hey! The Realm was essentially an online role-playing game that used some of the systems and styles that Sierra was known for, like its point-and-click adventure style movements, humor, and graphical art style. For the time it was released, MMORPGs weren't even really a genre. Games like this would originally be referred to normally as graphical multi-user dungeons, at least until more refined titles like Ultima Online and EverQuest would completely blow games like The Realm out of the competition. Fortunately though, The Realm has kept itself in development even through its multiple business changes, and yes, it is still playable even to this day. Now developed by Digital Alchemy, it follows a pseudo free-to-play subscription model where there is a free to play server, which is the original game without any of the modern changes and content updates, as well as a pay to play server that has new content to experience. It felt like taking a portal back into the 90s when I started playing this game and talking to the community. But obviously the subject of this video is, is it worth checking out today in 2024? Well, let's talk about this charming artifact of a game, The Realm Online. So the first hurdle of the realm online is creating an account and logging in. <laughs> Oh wait, you serious? It's not as bad as Final Fantasy XI's Play Online service, but let me break it down for you. First, you need to create an account from the main website. However, this only creates your website account. From here, you have to create a game account. Once your game account is created, simply download the launcher, pick your server, and then you can log into the actual game. One thing I almost forgot since it seems like such a silly extra step is once you create your game account, you then have to link it to your web account so that you can actually manage it and subscribe to the game if you want to. It's such a weird way to get your account all set up, but I suppose it's most likely just due to the age of the account system in place. From the launcher, you'll see two choices. The Grove server is a free-to-play vanilla server that doesn't have any of the content updates and restructuring of the pay-to-play server, which is called Maven's Gamble. Once you log into a server, you are met with a character choice and creation screen. Surprisingly, the character creator in the Realm Online has quite a bit more options than I was expecting. You have options for gender, hair, facial hair, eyes, facial structure, ears, each with multiple options, which I ironically is more options than some modern day MMOs. From here you can also choose your character's race, from human, elf, giant, and orc. Each race has slightly different attribute bonuses. The next screen prompts you for your character's class and attribute choices. There are four main classes in the realm being the adventurer, the warrior, the thief, and the wizard. Naturally warriors are best suited for players who like playing melee fighters. Wizards are great for people who favor spellcasters. Thieves are favored in skills 
related to daggers, throwing weapons, and dealing critical hits. And finally, the adventurer is a well-rounded class with no real specialization. Attributes on the class selection screen are also explained. Strength increases melee damage, dexterity increases movement speed and damage with throwing weapons, intelligence helps with spells, and endurance increases the amount of HP you gain per level. Once you are happy with your choices, enter your name and title, and you are plopped into your player-owned house. From here, there is no tutorial to speak of. Rather, the game leaves you to your own discovery, much like the game's story and world. So the story of the realm is kind of whatever you want it to be. Sure, there is lore and storyline bits you can get from various NPC dialogue and such, but the realm online was released during a time when a story wasn't really the main focus in a role-playing game like this. Instead, the story is what you make of it. The world has lore and history for you to interact with and discover, if you want to, but ultimately, what is your story? Besides all the philosophical jargon, let's get back to the game. Graphically, the game has a classic 2D hand-drawn art style with many of the environments, enemies, and backgrounds giving a hand-painted look. Obviously, it looks dated by today's comparison, but art styles like this tend to age much more gracefully than early 3D graphics like EverQuest has. Music and sound effects in the realm, however, are sort of lacking. Most of the themes you listen to loop relatively fast, and in general, there just isn't a lot of music in the game. You are most often going to hear the combat theme over and over again, so this is definitely a game I recommend popping on your own music and playing. Once you leave your home, you will enter the first city. From this point, you can tell the game is a 2D pseudo side-scroller. Clicking around the environments will have your character move to that location versus using the traditional WASD or arrow keys that other games would later adopt. One thing that the whole player base will tell you to do every time you log in is to speed up the gameplay frames by pressing Alt and W at the same time. This makes moving around a lot faster since it speeds up the game speed. It's almost like a cheat code that you can activate at will. Compare something like this to any other MMORPG. You'd be banned in other games for something like this. Clicking at the edge of a screen will have you move to another screen with the world map essentially being broken into a bunch of different screens. Walking around the beginner city, you can talk to NPCs, find shops, and meet other players who are incredibly friendly and more than willing to help new players. I recommend pulling up the game's wiki and reading up on some information like where certain shops are located and what areas to begin leveling your character. Since the game has basically zero hand-holding, you can find yourself walking into a higher level area where you'll find the death screen rather quickly. Once you have your bearings on the game, the most you'll spend time in is in the game's combat system. Combat in the Realm Online is surprisingly a turn-based combat system. Essentially, while exploring certain areas, you will see enemies you can click on to initiate a battle. Once in a battle, your character and party will begin on the left side of the screen, with enemies beginning on the right side of the screen. Round structure begins with actions that you give your character varying from several different commands. Attack, charge, guard, flee, cast spell, eat drink, move, and use are all of the available options within combat and are more or less self-explanatory. Each round, depending on your selected action, will have you, your allies, and enemies move around on the battlefield as needed. For instance, if you are wielding a melee weapon, your character will move closer to a specific enemy you select to begin attacking. Ranged attacks like throwing daggers or spells obviously don't require your character to move to attack. The combat system is incredibly simple, especially in the beginning, where you will largely only use the attack action or spell action. Progression through leveling up and skills will further change strategies in combat, but we'll talk about progression in a bit. Besides combat, the realm has a few other features to speak of. As you saw in the beginning after you created your character, each player has a player-owned house that is given to them right from the beginning. You can decorate your home with various items you can purchase in dedicated shops. The 
The currency for these items aren't easily obtainable though, so it's not really a system you'll interact with much when you start. However, it does act as a bank since they give you a storage chest that is password locked. More on why it's locked in a bit. Crafting does exist in the realm online, but it's a bit hard to get into. It requires that you unlock the skill first, and then you need mana crystals which can only be obtained by using a specific item in a specific location. Basically, don't worry about crafting until you are a much higher level. Instead, focus on getting rare loot drops from enemies for equipment. Speaking of equipment, let's talk about progression in this game. Progression in the realm is very much a classic grind, and depending on which server you are playing on, it can be completely different. First, you have your character's level, which can either go up to level 200 on Maven's Gamble, or a whopping 1000 on the vanilla server. What? That's crazy! Each level up grants HP based on your endurance, as well as build points which you can use to learn and increase your skills. Skills and equipment ultimately determine how powerful your character is, since skills can relate to your combat potency with specific weapons, spells, or defense. There is also skills for crafting which help improve what you can craft, and if you are a magic-focused character, you can help enchant equipment with permanent buffs. Unique to the new server is also mastery points, which is a system where you slowly improve skills as you use them, similar to old skill ticks from Final Fantasy XI and EverQuest. Equipment is another important factor in characters' power. Loot obtained from enemies have a chance to contain rare items that can be identified. Similar to what you see in games like Diablo, rare equipment can have extra stats and perks attached to them, like extra strength or spell casting. Ultimately, there is quite a lot of ways to build your character and continuously get more and more power powerful the more you play, with the high level caps on both servers. With all the grind though, what can players look forward to doing at endgame? Is there any sort of PvP to speak of as well? Since this is such an old MMORPG, there isn't really a major focus on something like endgame. There is group content dungeons for high level players to tackle together if they choose to, but largely most players will stick to grinding out levels until they hit max. PvP is really really weird weird in the realm, but like, in a good way. Well, at least on paper. PvP is an option you can actually toggle during character creation, and if you do so, you can attack other PvP opted players. PvP players also have the option to pickpocket other players if they've invested in the said skill, as well as potentially raid other players' homes and steal from their bank chest, hence why it's password protected. However, in all the time I played the realm online, I never ran into any players who actually interacted with any of the PvP systems in the game. The systems here sound really intriguing, and honestly, it just needs content in-game that incentivizes players to actually engage in PvP. Until something like that is added though, don't expect many players to actually touch PvP. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. The last thing I want to touch on is the game's community. As I stated before, the community is incredibly friendly and welcoming on both servers. For a 25-year-old game, it's actually quite hard to find information on certain systems or how the game works. Luckily, that is where the community comes in. Developers are often online as well, so if you have any issues relating to the game, you can typically get help rather quickly. I was surprised to see how many people are typically online, especially on Maven's Gamble, the pay-to-play server. On some days, I saw as many as 100 plus people online, although it can probably be argued that this was players multiboxing. Multiboxing is a slight annoyance when it comes to classic MMORPGs like this, but unfortunately, it's a common practice. I'd rather see players actually group up with each other and not with themselves, but I also can't blame players for multiboxing. Now, this would be part of the video where I talk about the game's monetization, but really the only thing you can quote unquote buy in this game is the subscription which provides access to the new server. There is no cash shop, there is no cosmetics, the subscription doesn't provide any extra benefits, no boosted XP or gold, nope, just access to the pay to play server. Yes! Yes! 
but you can also just play the vanilla classic server for free. Overall, the Realm Online is an interesting step back into 90s PC gaming. I think unfortunately with all the exchanging of the game business-wise, it missed out on some of the much needed quality content updates, but Digital Alchemy are actively changing and developing on the new server. The game is definitely fun and anytime I play, I always feel like I am progressing my character, but I have to admit that the game is incredibly dated for 2024 in the MMORPG environment. I definitely recommend it to anyone looking for a nostalgic kick though. Let's get to my final thoughts. The Realm Online has a classic 90s PC adventure game feel and is an incredible artifact that is still playable to this day. For those looking to play a retro nostalgic MMORPG, the Realm is definitely for you, especially if you are a big Sierra Entertainment fan. For how archaic some of its designs are, the Realm does have a lot more depth and customization than I initially thought. You really have quite a lot of options when it comes to characters character creation and build diversity. Obviously with how the game's monetization is only tied to a subscription service, allowing access to a pay to play server, there is no pay to win cash shop in the realm online. You either play the free server or you have access to the paid server with the subscription. No boosts or buyable cosmetics to speak of. Lastly, the game has an incredibly friendly and welcoming community that is open to helping new players join the realm online. It's a tightly knit group group of folk that relatively all know each other on a regular basis, so if you are looking for that type of community, then jump on in. For all the ways you can grow your character, equip different weapons, change attributes, skills, and class during character creation, there is definitely a correct way to build specific archetypes. Especially on the classic server, if you aren't planning ahead of how you want to build your character, you can essentially gimp yourself and create an incredibly underpowered build that you more or less will have to give up on, which sucks, considering if you put a lot of time into playing it. That grind could have taken you quite a lot of hours, only to discover that you have a completely unplayable character. The game is really grindy, especially on the classic server with the high level caps, but I suppose that just means you'll always have something you are working towards. In terms of features the game has, there just isn't a whole lot to speak on. There is combat, dungeons, a crafting system, pseudo PvP, and and that's kind of it. Most of your game time is just spent going from leveling areas to the next, grinding your skills or level with nothing really to break up that monotony. This is basically just due to the age of the game, but realistically, other MMORPGs do have other features that help break up that grind. Lastly, the game is obviously really dated. From how you create an account to how the game actually plays in its low resolution, it sorely needs a lot of quality of life upgrades. An absolute save grace for the game would be a complete engine overhaul, but realistically, the small team developing the game would never have the funds to most likely do something like that. It's a bit of an unfortunate fate for the realm, but maybe one day in the far future, it will have a second chance at a complete overhaul. So that's my thoughts on The Realm Online. It's crazy to think that a nearly 30 year old game at this point is still online and running with a dedicated player base, but games like this last a lifetime to the ones who created memories on it. So are you playing The Realm? Have you played it before? Or are you potentially going to give it a shot now? Comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel to support my content. Follow all my social media down in the description below and I will see you all next time.